Here we go now with our pal Tommy Glavin, the Hall of Famer who won 300 and some odd games for the Braves. Going to be part of that broadcast. That special broadcast for all the Hall of Famers, August 23rd. did it already. And that was a big hit. We're going to try it again. Smoltz and Francoeur and, of course, Chipper and everything else. But I want to start with Tommy today. I've interviewed him, what, about 100 times, Mr. Glavin, over the years. But I want to start today with your debut, which happened on this date in 1987 against the Astros. And you gave up some runs early. You must have been a nervous Nelly. Let me hear. Go ahead. Talk about that for a sec. 100%. Uh, certainly didn't go the way that I wanted, but I think uh, the, um, I, I guess I, I took solace in, in realizing that I uh, I fulfilled a dream, so to speak. I mean, uh, I always dreamed of playing in the major leagues when I was a kid and, and uh, to get drafted and get the opportunity to try to get there and then ultimately get there. It's surreal. You know, you spend so much time, uh, at least I did, uh, kind of going through the path and how you got there and the people that helped you and then you're on the mound and it's a little surreal and, and, you know, you're trying to focus on pitching, but you're probably spending as much time uh, reveling in the fact that you're in the big leagues. And then, you know, when uh, guys come up to the plate and, you know, you're thinking, Oh my God, I was just watching this guy on TV a couple of weeks ago. How did I get here? It's, it's a lot to handle, but uh, it didn't go well. Thankfully the second one was a lot better. Yeah, indeed. And remember, 86, the Astros almost beat the uh, Mets to uh, win the pennant. You know, that first year and a half, you had a lot of growing pains, Tommy. Did you doubt yourself 87, 88 and wonder if you could be a big league pitcher? Nobody would have thought Hall of Fame, 305 wins. But how about those first two years? Did Mr. Glavin doubt himself as a major leaguer? I mean, I don't know how you don't have doubts um, when you're not winning. I mean, that's what you're that's what you're paid to do, right? I mean, you go out there and you win. Now, there were a couple things, and I, you know, and I say this somewhat jokingly, but there is some truth in it, right? Uh, in my second year, my first full year in the big leagues in 1987, I lost 17 games. Now, on the one hand, yeah, I lost 17 games. On the other hand, I truly did believe in my heart that if if the Braves didn't like something they were seeing in me, they wouldn't have kept sending me out there to lose 17 games. So uh, there was clear, clearly, there was something in me that they saw that they liked. Uh, I think. It was more of an exercise for me uh, of, of really trying to be honest and assess, was I getting better? I mean, we weren't a good team. So for me to expect to go out there and individually win a lot of games probably wasn't realistic. So, uh, you know, fortunately for me, because we weren't a great team, I was able to go out there and pitch and get better. And I, and I felt like I did. I think the club felt like I was getting better every time I went out there. So, um, you know, that was what I kind of hung my hat on. Now, again, statistically, no, I wasn't winning a lot of ball games, but I could see that when I, when I was on my game, I was good. Um, it was just a question of either a getting on my game more often or B B figuring out how to win when I didn't have my good stuff. And that took a couple of years to learn how to do. 17 losses there, Tommy. Then he had 14 wins that uh, third year, and away he went as far as his career goes. Right, how about this Brave team currently, Tom? I mean, listen, their pitching is – I don't want to say it's – they have good pitching. It's not dominant pitching. It's good pitching. But this offense, my goodness, uh, they hit, they're they going to hit a million home runs. I mean, Acuna and Riley and obviously Olsen and, uh, you know, the, the Albies, who's hurt now, but we know how good he is. You know, Harris and – the shortstop, I mean, the catching, I mean, there is Rosario last night. Uh, you know, one through nine, this is as good an offensive team as we've seen in a long time. We'll see if they can keep it up against the great pitching, but, boy, dominant. Let me hear your thoughts on that for a sec. Go ahead. No, they are. Look, I mean, they're they're on the on the cusp of doing some historic things in the game offensively. Uh, you know, certainly the all-time home run record is, is within reach for them. Uh, but they, they just, you know, they put a lot of pressure on, on opposing pitchers. And, you know, it's like I always say when I do the games or I look at this team, I, you know, obviously I tend to break things down from a pitcher standpoint. And when you start breaking down lineups, you know, you start trying to find, a, you know, one or two guys in a lineup that you're going to eliminate to not let, let you let them beat you. And then you're going to start hunt, hunting for outs in other places in the lineup. And you can't do this with this lineup, right? I mean, you might say, hey, I'm, I'm going to not let Ronald beat me here. I'm going to not let Matt Olson beat me. All right, well, you've got seven other guys in the lineup that can beat you. So it, it's a tough lineup to navigate through. Now, to your point, do you expect this kind of crazy production uh, in the postseason when you're seeing better pitching night in and night out? 
Maybe not, but I still contend this is not a lineup that is that is uh, reliant on, on the home run. They're, they're a lineup that hits a lot of home runs, and it's a byproduct of what they are, but they don't rely on it. But I, I think that's what makes them such a dangerous team from the standpoint of they can put together big innings in a hurry. And a lot of times they do it early in the game and get the other team behind the eight ball early. But they also have the ability with the home run ball to come back in games. So 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 games are never over against them either. So um, you know, look, they're like a lot of teams, right? If if they, they they could improve their pitching, they probably would love to. But I think this offense is so good it makes makes up for whatever inadequacies they have in, on the pitching staff. And their first inning prowess is superb. So their pitching is good in the first inning, and they do nothing but hit homers in inning uh, number one. Freed reminds me a little bit of you, Tom. You know, I mean, he's got that kind of, you know, I, I know he's a lefty and everything, but he's not overpowering with fastballs. He knows how to pitch. He's a thinking man's pitcher. He's been in some big games already. He reminds me a little bit of you. I mean, a different kind, but uh, there are some similarities. Let me hear you take about that for a sec. Go ahead. Uh I think there are some similarities. I think when I when I look at him, when I talk to him, uh, when I watch him, I think he's a lot like me in the sense that he thinks his way through the game. He's not a guy that's going to go out there uh, and overpower people. But having said that, he's got good stuff. I mean, he's got a certainly an, an average to a slightly above average fastball. He's got a great breaking ball, uh, and he knows how to how to move the ball around. He's gotten a whole lot better as he's. Uh, matured at the big league level at sequencing pitches, using both pi both sides of the plate, uh, and really going to all quadrants of the strike zone, whether you know it's up or down. So, um, you know, I think he just is a guy that has a really good idea of two things. Number one, what he's good at, and he makes that the foundation of his game, and also what he's trying to do with each hitter that comes in that batter's box. And uh, you know, look, that's that's almost like a, a big midseason trade or a trading deadline trade for the Braves to get Max back. You know, he's missed most of the year uh, and he's back now. So that's been a big shot in the arm, so to speak, for uh, for that rotation this late in the season. I know Verlander wants to be the next guy and probably the last to win 300 games. He won a game last night. Uh, he's got 40-something, 48, 49 to go. I wouldn't put it past him with a fresh arm, uh, but I know those last 30 or 40 to get to that magic number is not that easy. Give me your thoughts on that for a sec. Go ahead. No, it's not. Look, I mean, I think when you look at Justin, uh, you know, certainly when he's healthy and he's out there, there's, there hasn't been a, a, a big drop-off of any kind in his stuff. Uh, now, the question is, can you stay healthy enough long enough to be able to continue to do that? And, and you know, as, as any pitcher will tell you or any player will tell you, the older you get, the harder it is to stay healthy. And, and you know, particularly for a guy like him, like it, it was hard enough for me at, in my 40s to go out there and do what I wanted to do, be, not, not because of velocity, but because, you know, it gets a little bit harder to throw the ball where you want to all the time. It gets a little bit harder to get that finish you wanted all the time and you know so he'll he'll have to contend with some of those things and i would imagine at some point in time uh he's going to have a little bit of a drop in velocity and and you know that's a an, another thing in and of itself but listen when he's healthy you know there still aren't many guys in the game that are any better than him in terms of going out there and being able to pitch and, and in terms of stuff so i agree with you i wouldn't put it past him because he doesn't seem to be showing much sign of, of slowing down with his stuff. It's just a question, I think, more than anything, can the body hold up long enough to do it? And you, of course, had 300. Tommy, we look forward to that broadcast in late August with all your little buddies there next week. Uh, the Braves, of course, we catch you when you're on there on television as it is. You do a hell of a, hell of a job. Always been a great spot. Thanks for the help here today. Congratulations. Good to have you with us. Happy to do it, Chris. Good to see you.